Hey programmers, welcome back. Before we talk about item potency, which I think is something that every developer should be aware of, let me give you a fun fact first. Well, a couple years ago, Uber Eats had an incident in India. Well, there was a glitch that let people order free food for the whole weekend. Long story short, this glitch was coming from the fact that Uber Eats was contacting a payment provider such as Stripe, and this payment provider was returning different error messages every time for the same error. And by that, Uber Eats, the API of Uber Eats, wasn't able to distinguish them and was creating new orders every time. So how is it actually related to our topic now? Well, first of all, let's define item potency or idem potency, it doesn't really matter. It's something in software and technology that typically refers to the idea that you can perform an operation multiple times without triggering any side effects. Meaning, imagine you have a function, some pure function, and you call this function many times, you can call it many times, and the result has to be the same every time. Doesn't matter how many times you call it, the result has to be the same. If it's not, meaning it's not item potent. And why is it so important in our case? Well, whenever you're developing APIs, you have to make sure that your API is consistent in its behavior. Well, Imagine this following scenario. Imagine you have a client that makes a request to create an order. And this is a post request, okay? So the client makes a request to the API and then the API wants to save it in the database because this order has to be saved somewhere. Well, imagine in the Uber's case, this database was actually a payment provider and the payment provider had a database. But in our case, it's gonna be just a database. So we now try to save this in a database and we create a burger. Okay, the burger is now saved in the database. What the database is going to do is it's going to return the, the message to the API. Either it's successful, the query was successful, either it errored out. And obviously our query was successful because we now have a burger in the database. But obviously when the API is returning the results to the client, this part can actually cause a failure. It can be a network disruption. It can be an actual exception in our code, but the client is gonna think that, hey, now I have an error, meaning why not press the same order button again? And now we have a second try. The client makes the same request here and the API thinks that, okay, another post request, I'm going to save this in a database as well. And now we end up having two burgers. And now the database returns the success message to the API. The API returns the success message to the client. And the client thinks, okay, my, uh, or my order is on the way. But actually the client ordered two times. This is exactly what happened with Uber. So I guess you're already thinking like, what can we actually do here? What's the remedy for it? And how can we fix it? Before we go into that, I want to dive a bit deeper into the item potency itself and when it actually is important. So we all have these different HTTP methods that we can perform, okay? We have a get, head, and some of them are actually fetching the information. Others are adding new information. So get, head, put, delete, trace, and option actually don't really need to be aware of item potency, okay? What needs to know about item potency and where we have to be careful is the post and patch because post is going to create something new in the database and patch is very similar actually to put. If you don't know the difference, I would suggest you to go and Google it. But basically put in replaces the item in the database as a whole while patch only patches it. Meaning if you have an array, put is going to completely replace an array, but patch is going to extend the array. This is why we need to be careful with item potency when we use these two methods. Obviously delete doesn't have to care about item potency because we're simply deleting the item. And in which scenarios do we have to be careful? Well, the scenario is like a complete or a complete purchase page where you actually have your order button because this page is the one that is performing this item potent action. And every time you're on this, on this kind of critical pages of your application, you have to remember about item potency. So let's go back to the solution or at least a potential solution. And the solution that is out there in the industry is something called an item potency key. I will call it X item potency 
ID or you can also call it a key. So the ID is going to be a unique identifier or in other words, just a random ID generated in our application memory. All right, so how is this going to function in our graph here? Well, whenever a client makes a critical, item potency critical request, such as pressing the order button here, we're going to attach this to our request. And notice that I added an X kind of a notation to is that, that this can be a header, a request header. It doesn't have to be a payload. We can attach it as a request header. When the request goes to the API, the API here can now handle the logic. But the first time the client makes a request, the API is going to keep this item potency key, then actually make a query to the database. When the burger is created, we're talking about the first burger, then the database returns a success message to our API. And now this item potency key that we have here has to be stored somewhere in a memory. And well, we're gonna talk about these different places where you can store this item potency key, but basically API has to keep track of this item potency key. Because the second time when the user is, makes a request with the same item potency because some kind of an error happened in the first time, the API already knows that, hey, I already have an item potency key with the same ID that you're sending me. Meaning the database has previously succeeded with creating your order. And now I'm simply not going to contact the database and return you a success message right away because your previous order has already been placed. Now a valid question would be, where do exactly do we store this item potency key? Should we store it in the application memory? Well, probably not. I would suggest storing it either in, in a normal database. This database can basically live or it can be a table within this database that you're using here, or even better, we can see that we can also make use of a Redis cache. A Redis cache will live somewhere here where API usually contacts before reaching out to the database, which is going to hold these item potency keys to make use of the, to make use of it to have a proper error handling, okay? And what this item potency key would normally look like is very simple on the front end or on the client. Whenever we're making a request such as this, we're making a request to the cart, we're going to attach this header. And every time we make a request, this header is going to be there. As simple as that. I'm not going to show you the backend code because it would be more complicated. There are some if statements based on the request that you make to your Redis cache, but I hope you get the general idea. Okay, guys, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like as always, it's going to help my channel a lot. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.